use of triamcinolone in challenging cataract and anterior segment surgery. It's a potent steroid, so we can certainly inject at the end of a case to quiet inflammation and give us excellent results on post-op day one. But it's more than that. We can use the particular nature, as injected here, to trace outflow in the eye. As the particles go in the eye, and then we raise the intraocular pressure with some balanced salt solution, we see the catalog or triamcinolone particles flowing out the almond valve, confirming patency. We can also use triamcinolone to stain vitreous. Here's a case with prolapse of vitreous, and we can see there's an extensive amount of vitreous in that paracentesis in the anterior chamber. That alerts us to make a separate or different paracentesis so as to avoid entanglement of our instruments. In a complex or challenging case, this is a patient who's referred in for a sutured in lens. He's an aphagic patient, but prior to starting the surgery, we'll inject triamcinolone to stain the vitreous that's present. And now, when we put the infusion in the eye to disperse the particles, we see that there's a tremendous amount of prolapse vitreous in the anterior segment that needs to be removed prior to placement of the intraocular lens. Remember this triamcinolone stains the outer vitreous, so after doing a little bit of a vitrectomy, we'll need to restain. Here's another case of a posterior polar cataract where the capsule's been ruptured. Luckily there was no vitreous prolapse. The new IOL has been placed in the sulcus with optic capture through the capsorexis. To confirm the absence of vitreous in the anterior segment, we'll inject some triamcinolone here and disperse it around and confirm that in fact, yes, this eye is free from vitreous and the patient will do very well. Thank you.